Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Parenting in a Pandemic, supporting children with anxiety. My name is Ella Carey. I'm a nutritionist based in London, and I would like to say that we are all grateful to the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority for making this initiative a reality. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to just look at the I'm going to just look at the presentation for supporting children with anxiety. It's going to let me do it this time. Like to do it like this, so I'm just going to have to do it like this. Apologies, everybody. Here we are. We'll get there in the end. I love technology when it works. There we are. Okay, fantastic. So, just to say that this information is meant for educational purposes only, please consult your doctor if your child has anxiety and please seek professional guidance when implementing supplements, which is what I'm going to talk about in this webinar. So just a little bit about me. I'm a kinesiologist and a nutritionist based in London. I'm a mother of three boys and my middle son had an acute anxiety, which led me to researching effective tools and techniques. And I've since successfully worked with these practices and developed them. And I've brought them to many families whose children experience anxiety very successfully. And I'd like to share them with you today. So anxiety is fundamentally on its own, not a bad thing. It's a natural physical reaction to change or to excitement. Um, and it's very similar to excitement. The physiology is very similar to excitement and it's meant to just get us through a short period of time um, where we have elevated cortisol levels and we have a change around us for an, an exam or a house move or something happening and naturally our body responds with anxiety. But when that shift finishes, the cortisol levels should reduce and our body rebalance itself and go back to a balance. But when the problems arise is that when cortisol levels are constantly high and the person or the child is constantly worrying or in a state of worry about, it, it can be anything. And that, that's when the problems really start to, to happen and they start to have things like not sleeping properly, um, not eating properly and constant worry. So we're going to have a look at when this anxiety lasts a long time. So I don't want you to worry if your child has a few phases of feeling anxious and then, then it reduces. So just watch your child. Sometimes it's a problem and sometimes it isn't a problem. So we're going to have a look at when it is a problem. So the checklist is, the following checklist can help you observe your child and recognize anxiety. If you recognize five of these traits, then the risk of anxiety is quite high and it's worth you looking for some support. So pessimism and negative thinking patterns, such as imagining the worst. And you might hear your child saying lots of negative things. So for instance, my dad is going to have a car accident or my school peers are going to hurt me, just constantly worrying about lots of things, constantly worrying about things that might happen or have happened over-exaggerating the negatives, bad things always happen to me, rigidity and inflexibility, self-criticism, guilty thoughts, etc. I will never be able to do that. I will never know how to. And that's a very difficult thing for parents to hear their child being negative about themselves. And I think that you can be able to tell if it's, a, if it's just a, a low day or that your child has a constant self-negative talk. Anger, obviously anger is sometimes very normal 
Um, and as a parent, you can see if your child is constantly angry or constantly aggressive that causes you concern. Restlessness, irritability, tantrums, opposition and defiance. So constantly, constantly arguing against authority or pushing back against any rules. Crying, physical complaints such as stomachs, headaches, fatigue. I see this a lot in children. Anxiety and physical complaints really come hand in hand very often, especially stomach aches, especially around the tummy. Um, and this is for a number of different reasons, which we'll go into in the webinar. So there's more of the checklist. Um, avoidance behaviours, sorry, I'm going to turn this off. Avoidance behaviours such as avoiding things or places. Sleeping difficulties such as nightmares or night terror. And sleeping difficulties are actually a sign of low serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter and that we will go into this as well. And so it's not just anxiety isn't just um, a mind level issue. It's very much physical, very much in the body. And we will look at how we can balance the body to reduce anxiety. Perfectionism. So never things never being good enough needing to redo things or judging themselves very, very much. Excessive clinginess and separation anxiety. This can look like, yeah, so acting out to force a parent to cancel an appointment or just really clinging on and really making a problem if, if the child finds it difficult to leave the parent ever. And that can be very, very difficult for both parents and children. Um, procrastination, poor memory and concentration, withdrawal from activities and family interactions, Eating disturbances, so cravings is a very big uh, sign of, um, goes hand in hand with, with anxiety, and we'll look at why in a minute. So traditionally, anxiety has been seen and treated as a mental health issue with counseling and medication-based treatments typically available for sufferers, which can have some success. In my personal and clinical experience, it's best to treat the whole person to treat the whole person means to support their physical and mental health. And this is, is exactly the route that I took with my own son and I take with all of my clients in my clinic today. So supporting the whole person looks like, number one, we have exercise and movement. And this is really important because when a person is stressed and the adrenaline floods their body, they feel tense. And this can really affect their mood, their behavior. And really a really effective way is to, to move this out of their body is to run, to exercise, because that will move the adrenaline out of their body and make their body feel relaxed again, bringing them back into a state of balance. The second one is diet and supplements. Uh, we look at balancing the blood sugars and why it's important. We look at gut health. people and again I use those with my son and all of my clients that come into my clinic. The holistic aspect of it so connecting with yourself as a parent or a carer who supports a child with anxiety I'm going to show you just how and why it's so important that you're connected to your to yourself and to your own body and then connecting with your child and then connecting with your parent. so we're going to look at why these are important as well so looking at connection it's really when a child is in a state of anxiety there if you can imagine a ch your child right now imagining them feeling anxious and what they might be doing. And often what, what you see is they're not very present to themselves. They're thinking about the future or they're thinking about the past. They're thinking about something that's worrying them. They're, they might as well have their eyes closed because they're really all in their heads. And a really fantastic way to bring them back into the present moment is to help them verbalize how they feel and bring their awareness into the present moment, into their bodies. And this really some really helpful questions for this are when they feel anxious, 
you can get down on, onto their level and look into their eyes and say, where can you feel it in your body? And this focuses the feeling. It brings it from a space of out there in the world of worries and thoughts of bad things happening or concerns to really focusing their attention immediately into their body. And then they might say something like, I can feel it in my stomach. And that suddenly makes it so manageable for you, for the child. It's suddenly not something out there that might, that, that's unquantifiable. It's suddenly quantifiable and you can place it. So it's in their stomach. And you say, how, out of 10, how strong is this feeling? And this is very helpful for gauging the severity and managing your response. So if they say two out of 10, you might be able to distract them, to ask them to look around, to see what's around there in their environment or give them, speak to them, or you, you understand it's not on the high level of, of severity. But if they say eight, then you'll, you'll know that you need to calm your own tone of voice, calm your own body, be in a calm environment and really, really shift the the gear of the responses there and so that's a really helpful way to understand your child to create connection with your child and what i find really useful as well is after we've using the out of 10 with children it's really fantastic for them to be able to help themselves so you can you can see that they can they're reducing it through when you start applying these techniques and tips and can you feel, give this feeling a colour or can you give this feeling a sound? And different children will have different preferences. They might be more visual or they might be more audio. So it depends on your child, which one that they might like to answer. My child like, might like to give the feeling a sound and he would be able to get really creative with it. And so you can see that from the series of questions from where can you feel it in your body? how strong it is and can you give it a color or a sound you're bringing the the feeling of anxiety or the thought of anxiety into the body gauging how strong it is and making it playful and bringing it out of the body so when you give it a sound or a color you can either get a pen and paper and color it color the the f feeling or you can sing it or make noises with it. And so with children, this is really fantastic because it can really help to shift the energy quickly. It really re releases endorphins, singing and making sounds. And suddenly we've shifted the anxiety into a, a, a tangible thing, a tangible sound. And that's, that's a really empowering thing to, to be able to do. And that's it almost as if you can hold it in your hand then in that sense. So that's really, that's a really lovely thing to do. Connecting to your body. And just to say that the, the importance of connecting to a person's body to your as, as the carer is that your heart, your breath, your pace is picked up by your child. And so when your child is in a state of anxiety, it's really fundamental that you as their carer, you stop. It's almost like putting your oxygen mask on first. You stop, you count, you just check your own body and you notice, is my heart, breathing, is my heart beating fast? Am I breathing fast? Am I tense? And you just take a couple of deep breaths and you relax your body. And this really is such a powerful, effective way to connect with your child and for your child to be able to connect to a, a sense of grounding and calm immediately. And so this is what we're going to offer our children with anxiety is the sense of grounding, peace and calm that we bring into our own bodies. And so by doing to do this, here's just a few exercises that we can do to do with ourselves and with our children as well to be able to bring a, an immediate sense of peace and calm and this is fantastic when they're having an anxiety attack a panic attack um, and it's also really fantastic for everyday meditation everyday practices we do this in the evening before they go to bed to help them get into the sleep routine to bring a sense of real peace and calm and safety to the child so the first one is counting the breath for five seconds in holding it for two seconds, 
and count and counting out for five. The second one is belly breathing. So the child and you put your hand on your belly and you breathe in and it's almost as if you're, you're blowing up a balloon with your, with your breath. And this is really fantastic for just bringing the breath down, down into the belly. Because when we're shallow breathing, our body gets the signal that we're stressed. So we need to barely breathe in order to tell our body that we're safe and everything all is well. The next one, the next simple exercise is stroking your shoulders from your shoulders to your elbows to bring a sense of calm. I'm going to just turn on my video for this. And this brings a real, it stimulates the brain and the senses in the brain that tell our body that we're safe. And if your child is having an anxiety or panic attack, you can do this to your child. You can also do this to yourself and you can also teach your child to do this for themselves. And it just brings a real sense of deep calm and peace in the immediate. And these exercises are really fantastic for the immediate, the, that anxiety attack and that, and that the diet. And after this, we're going to look at the long term reme remedial techniques for anxiety. And then we're looking at brain gym. So brain gym is a series of exercises designed to improve concentration, learning, memory and mood in children and adults. And these, children, these exercises bring an immediate sense of calm and presence and can be done anywhere. So the key words that we're looking at are focus, awareness, balance, coherence, cortisol reduction and calm. And this is what these brain gym exercises do. And so before we start with any brain gym, we're going to have a sip of water. A water is really, really essential aspect of looking after the body, looking after the brain, the central nervous system, and it balances the blood sugars, which I'm going to talk about later. And the brain button. So the first one is placing one hand across your belly, your belly button, and then you're rubbing your brain buttons. So just by your collarbone, just give these buttons a rub. And this stimulates the circulation in your brain it oxygenates your brain and it brings a sense of peaceful alertness just do that for a couple of seconds and i hope everybody's doing this at home and seeing how you feel in your body afterwards the second one is unlocking your ears so placing both hands at the top of both of your ears you gently unroll your ears from top to bottom this is very simple and you might be wondering how it's connected with anxiety and it's it stimulates circulation in the brain it stimulates the parts of your brain again that help you to feel calm and it's really fantastic for it quickly reducing anxiety and so you can do this to your child if they're feeling slightly anxious and you can do it anywhere and it's very relaxing and then we have and then just center yourself and notice how you feel in your body. And it's important for you as a carer to really feel the difference in your body after doing these so that you can understand it, that it's effectiveness for your children. And it's accumulative. So each time you do it, your child will associate it more and more with feeling calm. And then cross crawl. So as you walk or march on the spot, touch your right knee with your left hand and your left knee with your right hand. And this switches on both sides of our brain. So if we're feeling anxious, we'll have one part of our brain that the, that the blood is flooding to. It floods away from the prefrontal cortex, which is our memory and our learning. And it's much more difficult to learn if we're feeling anxious. You might find that your child is starting to have problems in school, for instance. And these are fantastic ways to bring a sense of real calm, really balancing the brain and bringing attention and concentration back. So hookups, let's move this over here. Cross your legs, extend your arms and cross them over your wrists. And we're just going to leave them 
in this position on your chest, breathing into your hands. Again, this helps us to relax, focus and concentrate. I do this with my children if they have a test coming up. Um, I ask them maths questions and I ask them to be in this, in this position because this keeps the body, it keeps the brain nicely stimulated, nicely calm. And all the circulation really balanced so that we have the circulation again at the prefrontal cortex and it keeps anxiety at bay. And then we've got some more, fig more exercises, so the figure of eights, connecting the left side of our brain with the right side of our body. So just using, putting your hand, finger in a pencil position and drawing a figure of eight in the air and you do it both sides. Very simple, very simple exercises and that's why I love it because as a parent we like simple things. We need quick, uh, quick and simple and effective techniques. So more hookups, join your fingertips together to make a tent and then you're just literally connecting your fingers one at a time. This focuses our brain, helps us to relax, focus and concentrate. And so again, if you're thinking of a child with anxiety, thinking about all the things that bringing your awareness into the centre line, into the body, engaging the brain, both sides of the brain is a really fantastic thing to do. Symmetrical air drawing, like the figure of eights, except you are drawing shapes keeping your fingers nice and symmetrical. And you can get playful and make different shapes in the air, whatever your child likes to do, but keeping their fingers coordinated, keeping both sides of their brain really focused here um, is a really, really effective way to keep anxiety at bay as well. So we're moving on to diet. The pillars of an anti-anxiety diet are blood sugar balancing, hydration with mineral filtered water, increasing diversity of beneficial bacteria in the gut. Serotonin is the feel good neurotransmitter and it's made in our gut. So we're going to talk about this. They increase the mineral intake and avoid foods which strip the body of essential nutrients. So balancing blood sugars, we, we need to avoid carbohydrate rich foods Things like pastas, breads, rice, crisps, things like that, potatoes even, they can make our blood sugars soar quite high very quickly and then crash. And you might see your child becoming quite hyperactive and then tired and emotional and you know that they've had a blood sugar crash. Um, avoiding fast food and then eating protein, fat and vegetables. Protein and fat are the main ones for balancing blood sugars and drinking a lot of water balances blood sugars. Moving on to gut friendly foods. So fermented food is a really fantastic one. Um, kefir, yogurt, sour cream, kimchi and sauerkraut are the, the main fermented foods and we'll go into those. Uh, good fats for the endocrine and nervous system, cold pressed oils, nuts, avocados, things like that are really fantastic. Staying away from hydrogenated and processed oils, so margarines and we, we don't really use those, we look at the good fats. And then the vitamins and minerals, so coenzymes, covaxes, things like zinc and magnesium. They are, I would say, my number one go-to for anxiety. They're, and they're, it's very common that they are actually deficient in people. Um, and it's very easy to supplement them. You can supplement with them with food supplements and food. So we're going to look at the, the foods that are best for the richest sources of these. So blood sugar balance. The symptoms of blood sugar imbalance are that the child is emotional, hyperactive, has mood swings, food cravings, so especially sweet foods, again, carbohydrate rich foods, crisps, cakes, chips, things like that. Constantly hungry and difficulty falling asleep. So what do you do about it? You can so avoid all sugary foods, number one, and this might be difficult in the first stages. Include good fats, avocados, meats, fish, seeds, and nuts are great, and drink plenty of water. And you will 
I think for myself as a parent, cutting out sugar was the main, sugar and carbohydrate rich foods was the biggest help of, for my child. And then looking at foods which are anti-nutrients, so the white flours, grains, sugar, factory meat, fizzy drinks, these strip the body of a magnesium and wreak havoc with the blood sugars. And my message really is that par a lot of parents say, oh, we'll give it to them as a treat. I'll treat my child with a Coca-Cola or I'll treat my child with a cake. I'll treat my child with a biscuit. But actually, if your child is sensitive and has anxiety and their blood sugars are out anyway, it's really not to treat so it's let's look at start retraining the way that we we parent and we look we see our we give our children treats and we we'll start to have a look at that uh, and actually cutting out sugar and gluten has, has a huge effect on anxiety and so that really is the biggest treat um, and that's something that i had to talk to my children about all the time is saying you know feeling good is the treat feeling good is the treat so it's kind of changing the language so looking at neurotransmitters and minerals, magnesium um, and GABA. So GABA is the amino acid, which acts as a neurotransmitter in the brain and it has a calming effect. And magnesium works with GABA. So those are the two, two main things that really, really support anxiety if we're looking at nutrition. And magnesium and GABA rich foods are pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, walnuts, almonds, halibut, shrimp, broccoli, spinach. Um, magnesium is found a lot in plant foods. GABA is found a lot in protein rich foods, so meats. Um, and so meats and vegetables, you really can't go wrong, um, especially if, with a child with anxiety, really needs to have a lot of really good quality protein and good quality vegetables. Tryptophan is the um, precursor to serotonin and gut bacteria play a key role in, trans in metabolizing the tryptophan into serotonin. So again, looking at animal protein for that. Zinc, uh, looking at animal protein, pumpkin seeds, fish and liver. And then omega-3 plays a key, is a key component in brain, balancing mood, brain and nervous system health. So we look at oily fish and seeds high quality protein again so how much protein does your child need so half their weight in pounds in grams so for instance a 40 pound child would need 20 grams of protein per day five to ten portions of vegetables today and plenty of unfiltered water of course as well fruit is really fantastic so if we're looking at fermented foods supporting the microbiome health so there's a, for any people who enjoy looking at scientific papers uh, and understanding the science behind things. Um, there's, there was an experiment called the swimming mice experiment where they got germ-free mice, which means that they have no gut bacteria at all. And when they took away their gut bacteria, the mice started presenting with depression and anxiety. And they put, took these mice and put them in water and found that the, their response was just not to swim, to give up and to feed their cortisol levels rose and they responded with a lot of anxiety. And then they gave these same mouse one strain of lactobacillus, which is a, a bacteria, a beneficial bacteria that we find in probiotics, in fermented foods. Um, and what they found was that the same mice, when they did the same experiment, putting them in water, they had lower cortisol levels, less stress, no signs of anxiety, and swam for longer. And this for me is a really, lovely it, it just highlights how important just one bacteria how it, how it can impact your response to the outside world and to the world around you and so that's a very helpful that you'll have these handouts and you have the the links here so the supplements for reducing anxiety to recap we have zinc and the amounts the dosage is three to five milligrams the omega-3 is 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams. Probiotics, the specifically lactobacillus. Magnesium, for a child between four and nine years old, we're looking at 110 milligrams. For a child nine years old and upwards, we're looking at 300 milligrams. Again, please speak to a professional if you're going to implement uh, supplements. It's really helpful to have a person who's really experienced, really 
knows their way around what they're doing to be able to support you as the family. And then the links and the resources. So we have a headspace for kids. So these are just really helpful technique uh, links to things that I found useful as a practitioner and as a parent that you can have a look for here. So meditation spaces, the GAPS diet. So the, the diet that we look at for children with anxiety is very effective as the GAPS diet. Um, and if you'd like to discuss that, you can email me and we can talk about that. Hand in Hand Parenting is an organization that look at parenting courses and techniques if you'd like more support around that. Brain Gym and Heart Coherence, which is a beautiful meditation technique. Some anxiety links. And then my website at the bottom for any supplements that you'd like to have a look at. And some study links. Lovely. So, if anybody has any questions, So sometimes people ask me about things like breakfast cereals. So breakfast is a very difficult meal of the day because often people are very busy going to school, going to work, and they just grab the nearest anything that they, the, the child will. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hind. Breakfast cereals was a the biggest issue in my house because my children especially if they'd go to other people's houses would try very sugary breakfast cereals with no nutritional content and then my children would ask for them and that was a very difficult thing so then i had to find ways that would make that what foods that my child would eat that is nutritional good for them and doesn't increase their blood sugars because actually when you go into a supermarket and you look at the thank you hind um that's really lovely and your children are lucky to have you too um when you go into a supermarket and you look at the breakfast cereals aisle i don't think in in my country or in london i couldn't find one breakfast cereal that is beneficial to feed my children and that wouldn't impact their blood sugars and so this is I've written a whole um, month meal plan just based on breakfast. So if anybody's interested in that, you can email me. Okay, so we have a, a question. Hello, what is the appropriate minimum age for starting these techniques and for these techniques to be effective? Lovely. So thank you for your question. As soon as your child begins to show any signs of anxiety is the all of these techniques are really really very they're effective and they're safe and they're gentle and they can be used from any age and in fact i talked earlier in the webinar about parents creating coherence and harmony and balance in their own bodies before they connect with their child who, who has anxiety. And we can do this as parents, even from when our children are babies. And in fact, I had an experience when my baby was weeks old and he was waking up at night and I knew he wasn't hungry and I knew he didn't need a changing and he was crying. And I noticed that my body was stressed. And so what in that moment, what I did was I decided to calm my breathing check in with my heart rate because your baby has been in your, in your belly for nine months and they know what your heart rate is like. And even if they're outside your body, they can pick up on your heart rate. So as mothers, especially, slowing down our heart rate through slowing down our breathing, even if that child is a baby, will impact and relax your child. So you can even do that. It's something that you can even do now. If your children are around you, or after this webinar, or if you're sitting next to them in the car or on the bus, or if you're reading them a story, you can really ground and tune into your own body 
relaxing your body and just observe them and see what they do. It's a really lovely thing to do. Thank you for your question. So I was talking about breakfast cereals and I have a month meal plan of breakfasts. Thank you very much, Lucy. I'm glad you enjoyed the session. Um, I have a month of meals for breakfasts because I know as a parent and a practitioner, it is probably the most difficult meal of the day to feed my to feed children. They just want cereals and sugary things. And so if you're interested in that, you can email me and I'll send you one of those. Um, some more, so I, my next sessions, just to mention to you, are, thank you, Nanita. Thank you for sharing more ideas. If anybody has any questions, please type them into the question and answer box and we will answer as many as we can. Uh, I love questions and I love talking about this topic. And as a parent, I know how scary and disempowering it can be to have a child with anxiety. So now is your chance. There's no silly questions, ask away. Just as mentioned, the next session is understanding your child's fussy eating. So if your child is only limiting them, their diet to they're asking just for specific foods, that can be quite a worry. So we look at ways why they might be doing that and ways to, to counter that. Um, and the next session that I'm doing after that, so sorry, that's on September the 23rd. And you can all sign up to that and I'd love to see you all there. The next one is why does my autistic child have bowel issues and what to do about it? So I work with a lot of children with, with autism and a lot of children with autism have digestive and bowel issues. And so we look at why that, why that happens and what to do about it. And that is on September the 30th. And then the following session is October the 28th and that's on gut health for autism. So if anybody is interested in any of those subjects i'd love to see you there so some other questions that parents ask me is what do i do about family members when i want to um, look after my child's diet and not give them sugar but other family members like to because they want to give their a treat to the child so i had to I, in my personal experience, I had to really bring all of my family on board, have a meeting with everybody and really re-educate everybody about it. it's not a treat to feel, to, to feel so awful. And it's not a treat to, to, we had to really reframe the idea of a treat basically. And so um, bringing my family on board and giving them a list of all the foods that the child would, could have, so the fruits, you can, you know, things like making the fruit laces and you can make those in the oven. You can make, you can make lots of lovely treats, cakes, things that look like sweets, um, but actually they're sugar free and they're gut healthy. And so when you bring your family on board and you, you could also provide some of those foods for your family to give to your child, they still feeling like they're treating the child because all any of the family really want to do is feel that they're included and feel that they're loved and feel that their efforts are acknowledged and appreciated as well. Um, so we have a question. What do I do if my child gets angry very quickly? And how does it to relate to being anxious? Okay, lovely, thank you for that question. Yeah, how old is your child? Four years old. Thank you. So four years old, it's very typical. It's a natural thing for the child to be, to be angry. Is it causing you concern that it happens so much that it causes you concern? And is there aggression? So while we're just, oh, oh, loud shouting, but no aggression, okay. So this, it can be very normal, frustratingly, um, in four-year-olds because four-year-olds are at that developmental stage where they're learning about the world. They really, they're, they're depending on their, his vocabulary, does he, does he, 
is his words and his vocabulary, is it quite extensive or not yet? Because this is where they're really pushing through in their development and they really want to understand, they really want to get themselves understood. So it's about, all about expressing himself and so, or herself. And so at this stage, what I would do if your child gets angry very quickly is where can you feel it in your body? And can you give this feeling a color? And then we, we could draw it because that's, it's expressing himself. It's, it's being able to get out this, the anger is normally frustration at not being able to express, he's probably, or him or her, your child is probably very intelligent and has a lot of ideas that they want to express, but can't quite get it out. And so that's where the shouting comes from. And so you, and in, as a parent, your response might be to, to tense up and feel frustrated and to respond with maybe shouting, but you reduce your tone of voice, calm your tone of voice, show your child, model your child how to express yourself. Breathing into the belly. And you, can, you don't have to tell your child to do all of these things things you do it yourself and they will mimic you they will copy you okay and you ask where can you feel it in your body how strong is it out of 10 and also if your child you know wants to make noise it can be that can be okay too and so we we give it a noise often with my children we do silly noises like <laughs> and stamping our feet and then and then what you find is the the frustration shifts and then the laughter comes and then you have a moment of peace and silence but what this what this takes is presence and connection so not thinking from the parent i have to just quickly quickly sort this out because we have to go and i think that's a big problem a lot in modern day parenting and something that i found you know and as a working mother I've, I'm always busy, I've always got something else to do. And often I don't give space, I don't give time to, you know, enough time to this person who's struggling to get themselves expressed. So the biggest tip and the biggest help in that moment in an anxiety attack or an anger attack is to prioritize that in that moment and you're not doing anything else. You don't need to be anywhere else. Fully focus in this moment. Does that make sense? And you can go back over the, the webinar, the handouts. You can read again the questions. Thank you, fantastic. You can read the questions um, that I've put out with the rainbow on, on, on that slide. And those questions are the four fantastic questions for connecting and helping children to express themselves. Because really, when you don't feel understood or you don't feel like you can express yourself, even as adults, it's really scary. You know, and so if we can encourage our children and if we can teach our children how to understand our feelings, connect with our feelings and express them and that the people around us can hear us and understand us and hold us in that, you know, that in itself can reduce stress, reduce fear, reduce anxiety and anger. I'm loving these questions, everybody. Thank you so much. You've made my day. So my next question was, if my child is having an anxiety attack, what can I do about it? But thank you, you have um, answered that one for me. So that's fantastic. Um, so in the webinar, we mentioned water filters and why and wh which one do you recommend? So water filters um, are important for when we're looking at gut health and physical, the physiology of the body. Um, Number one, because it helps children to drink more water. So the water filter that I recommend, is called a Nikon waterfall and you can, it's on my website. Um, and it's made in a way that you fill it up and you put it on the side in the kitchen and it has a valve on it. So the child can go and fill it up themselves. Um, and that's a nice way for the child to kind of feel empowered and feel instead of always asking for water, they can go and help themselves to water. And actually that's a really simple way that parents can encourage their children to drink more water um, but also because it filters out chlorine and fluoride 
which are shown to strip the body of minerals, remember those essential minerals, the magnesium and the zinc, that help the body to do its processes that, and to work with the neurotransmitters to make sure the child's body is in balance and there's no anxiety. So when we have a reduction of min minerals, um, we're more at risk of anxiety. So that's why we want our water to be really clean, mineral rich, and the, the Nikkin waterfall puts minerals back into the water. Um, and we'd like to stay away from plastic bottles for the, just for the planet's sake. Lovely. So that's all of my questions. If anybody has any more, I'm going to stay online for two or three more minutes just, just to see if anybody would like to ask any more questions. It's been such an absolute pleasure to present this for you today. And if anybody would like to speak to me about anything privately, my email address is info at fullspectrumhealth.org. How do you manage temper tantrums in the children and what would be the action parents can do? Temper tantrums are, they're a very, very challenging one for parents. I know this one because you just want to say no, you know, come back at them with, to say you can't do that. But actually it's the opposite way that I found is the most effective thing to do. Again, you connect into your own body and what you'll notice is when your child starts to have a temper tantrum you'll notice a trigger in yourself you might feel anger you might feel rage you might feel stress and that's the first place that we start is to relax our own bodies relaxing our shoulders breathing into our bellies and all the while our child is having a temper tantrum there and you're not engaging you're not leaving you're not facilitating you're not not enabling it all you're doing is breathing into your own body. You can put your hand over your, put your hand over your belly. You can even do a hook up like this. The important thing, and you might think, why is it important for me to be relaxed if my child is stressed? But you're like, it's like a ping pong game. If you're stressed, your child will be stressed and vice versa. So the first thing that we do is to really center into ourselves and focus on ourselves. Because the tensor tantrum in the children is a natural part of their development. It's them look figuring out their world. It's figure, them figuring out themselves and them figuring out the best way to get what they want. And what we're going to teach them is the best way to get what they want is to, be, to relax themselves and to express themselves. And children can do this when they're relaxed and they're happy. And so when we've relaxed ourselves and we can feel our heart rate reducing, you can turn to your child and say your child is there and they're having the temper tantrum there. You can, it's often if they're throwing themselves around, you just hold, just making sure that their head isn't hitting the floor, just protecting them, but you're not engaging with them. You're allowing them to feel their feelings. And what they will do often is rise 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 and then fall and they will come to you and search to, at you for reassurance skin to skin contact skin to skin contact is a really helpful way to bring them back into their bodies it's just and when they're having a temper tantrum again it's their reptilian brain that's that's triggered the prefrontal cortex the, the blood moves away, so they're not thinking clearly. You can't speak a child out or talk a child out of a temper tantrum. Your breathing, your heart rate, and your holding the calm space is going to be the quickest thing to help the child move through that. And again, just looking, so that's in the immediate, and then the longer term of temper tantrums is looking at, you know, every time they have a temper tantrum, is their blood sugar low? Have they, have they, do they need some food or have they had some sugar that's caused them to have a spike and then a drop? Thank you very much for your question. I hope that helps. And so just looking at the diet aspect of it, when you, when your child, when you eliminate the foods that cause the blood sugar imbalances, 
and you start implementing a diet that balances their blood sugar and remineralizes their body, their, their anxiety and acute attacks sh will lessen and they'll be much more balanced. Parents always tell me that their mood, sleep, behavior, concentration, school reports all improve. I had one child go jump two years in three months that we were working together. She jumped two years in her reading levels. You know, and so this is really, when you work on one thing, you work on everything and when you're looking at nutrition and the body. So I think I saw another question. Oh, lovely. Can anxiety cause temporary nervous tics in toddlers? That's an interesting question. It can, it absolutely can. But another thing that can cause tics is food sensitivities. Um, so that's something that I would look at. I would, I would go to speak to um, a professional about that. Um, but yes, absolutely. And so I would definitely implement all the things that we've talked about today, especially looking at diet. And I would look more into that child about, you know, do they have other symptoms of food sensitivities? And so that's something that we would, uh, either you can email me or speak to uh, a nutritionist locally or, and speak to your doctor as well, because it's, if there's, if it comes with other symptoms, that's when we'd like to make sure that it's been, um, been identified and been addressed. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for all of your fantastic questions. They've really, really, really made my day. And it's been such a beautiful experience to present this to you. Um, it's really a subject that's close to my heart as a parent and, you know, and as a practitioner. So again, if anybody would like to speak to me privately, you can email me and we can set up a call. Um, and otherwise, have a very, very lovely day and wishing everybody all the best. Thank you very much.